757 beats. My block, my block, we rollin', we rollin'. Your block, your block, you foldin', you fold. If you hot, if you hot, we scotch, we scotch. You rock, you rock, we roll, we roll. You rock, you rock, we roll, we roll. My block, my block, we roll, we roll. Your block, your block, you fold, you fold. If you hot, if you hot, we scotch, we scotch. I think I realized I was elite uh, probably junior year when I was actually getting looks. Like when I was hearing from college coaches and it was becoming a reality to even go to college. Because before that, it was just like, I was just doing something that I love to do. It was just like, like I was a kid for real, like just playing and having fun with it. But I realized 11th grade, 11th grade, it was like, okay, like, they see something, so that's when I the switch clicked for me. Like, okay, you gotta start honing in on your craft because something really here. And just going back and watching my footage, back even back then, like just going back and watching old games as we would do on Saturdays or whatever, I started to see it. Like, okay, that's different. Like a lot of people ain't really doing what you're doing, bro. So that's that's when I really started taking it serious. That's really when I started like working out, lifting weights and everything, when I finally understood like, yo, you got something special. Going into senior year, my, my mindset changed just off the fact where I knew that I had looks from college. So it was like, I had to hone in on my craft and it was me working out, me getting the other players because River program, anybody know, like we won't really doing like other schools were doing. We would just show up a couple weeks before the season started and, and practice and that was that. But I will get credit to Coach Cadillac because I think that was our junior year when Cadillac came in and he started um, a camp. Like we had a camp where we would spend a night at the school in the gym for a whole week. Uh, two of day practices, just building as a team, like getting the camaraderie right and just build it. And I, and I knew I was the leader of that pack because it was pretty much everything I did, everybody else would follow. So an example of that is I remember going to UVA camp. Um, we had two of day practices at the UVA camp. We had a morning session and then we would have like an evening session. Probably like the third day into that, the morning session, I just woke up one morning and I was just, I was tired, honestly, like, and I just, I, ain't, I just knew I won't go into that morning session practice. So I'm like, yo, I ain't going, you know what I'm saying? But what happened with that, once I said I wasn't going, basically the whole team didn't go. And I, I'm the one that got in trouble for that. And i never forget, uh, UVA coach at the time was Al Grow. He stopped recruiting me after that because he said I was a bad leader. But in my mind, I'm like, yo, my mom paid for me to be here. Like if I choose not to go to this session, that's my choice. I was just honestly tired, but I seen the effect I had on the team. So I started making better decisions after that because I knew everybody would like follow my lead. So Tech became a top, like the top of that list really from the beginning because Tech was the first school that verbally, like officially offered me a scholarship. And that came, I earned my scholarship from Tech from going to a summer camp. Um, a summer camp that I didn't even want to go to. My mom literally had to make me go to this camp. I had broke my finger um, a couple days prior to this, this Virginia Tech camp at Norfolk State camp. Uh, broke my pinky finger. So in my mind, I'm like, there's no need for me to go to this camp because it's not, I can't participate. There's nothing I can do. So I, I'm not going, you know what I mean? My mom literally drug me to the bus that day, made me get on the bus and I went. But once I got there, I'm a competitor, so take my finger up, I'm gonna do what I do, you know what I mean? And that's what ended up happening. And as we're leaving that camp, Coach Beamer, this is my first time meeting Coach Beamer, he walked up to me, I had no idea who he was, he introduced himself, 
handed me an envelope and told me to open it when I get home with my mom. But me being me, I didn't wait till I got home. I, uh, when we got on the bus to head back to Chesapeake, a teammate of mine opened it up for me and, and read it out loud and it was them offering me a scholarship. So Tech always had a special place in my heart because like I said, they was the first ones to offer me a scholarship. But I was being recruited by the entire ACC, really, pretty much. Like I had scholarship offers from every school in the ACC. Not too many outside of the ACC. It was just mainly the ACC. It was a couple here and there outside of the ACC, but uh, UVA, again, they stopped recruiting me though. Mm -hmm. uh, NC State, Maryland, UNC was really my dream school. Like that's the school that, like when I was eight, and didn't even know college was like a, a possibility. That was always a school that I, I used to tell my mom all the time, I'm going to UNC, I'm going to UNC. But um, they was on me too. UNC was on me heavy. Like they was one of the ones that was at the school every day at one point in time. They was at my basketball games. They showed up like everywhere. Like they would be at the school when school opened like for a long time. Um, that was really my dream school for sure. But Tech, I think, stole the cake when I went when I went there, and I just seen how many players that was there from the seven five seven, and I'm I played with against these guys. I played with some of these guys, so it's just like I knew it was a special group. Like we had a we had a good team over those years, and that's what really won me over with Virginia Tech. It was just okay. This is like being home. Like it's like I know these guys. I know how they play. I know what they're capable of. I just know it was a good fit for me. I took one official visit. Uh, oh. I literally took one official visit and that was to Virginia Tech. Now, to UNC, I went to UNC and visited UNC, like just not necessarily official visits, but I went to UNC at least like six times. Cause mind you, I'm, I'm going to UNC. In my mind, I'm going to UNC. Like it ain't even, close, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't even close with no other schools. Like I'm going to UNC. So I went there like at least like six, seven times. Like it wasn't official official visits, but it, it I was treated like I was on an official visit every time that I went. Like I went to games, uh, got good treatment every time. They fed me good, showed me this place, showed me that place. Like it was always a good time and, and love every time I went to UNC. But Virginia Tech was my only official visit though. And it was just, I was so like I was so when I went there like it was just because I knew we had a special team and what steered me away from UNC was and this is me being a competitor again looking at their roster at their roster at the time they had like seven six or seven running backs on their rosters and I think it was only maybe two seniors um so I'm looking at it like, not that I can't go in and compete with these guys, but I'm I'm looking for the path of least resistance at that yeah. point, because I'm trying to play. Like, as soon as I go here, I'm trying to play. I ain't trying to red shirt. Red shirt was never on my mind at all. So I just weighed that option. I looked at Virginia Tech roster and, and seen, we had two running backs that was really the, the main two running backs, but they was about to be juniors. Mm -hmm. But in my mind, no disrespect to those guys, uh, Mike Emo, Cedric Hills, those my guys. I knew I was better than them, like out the gate. Like as soon as I got there, I just just seeing what was going on, I knew I was better than them. So I'm thinking, I'm going to play right away. It didn't work out that way, but that was my mindset, and that's what you know, that's what made me choose Tech over over UNC. But I ain't never experienced that like quite like that. Not a duffel bag. Yeah. Away. Yeah. I nah. Know. I wish, yeah. I, I could have used it. My mama could have <laughs> used it, you know what I'm saying? When I was coming out, those type of schools weren't recruiting our area like that. Mm -hmm. Basically, if you was good in the 757, you, uh, ACC was it. Mm -hmm. And a couple of SEC schools, but you was elite elite if you got them SEC looks, cause it was rare. Like it was very rare at that time. But ACC was where you was, I mean, one of them schools in ACC is where you was gonna go if you was going D1, coming out 757 back then. Now that narrative changed probably three or four years after I graduated. That's when I guess the 
everybody's eyes opened up to the talent that was in the 757 and everybody started recruiting 757, which included the Oregon's, the USC's, all of those schools, Texas, stuff like that. That started happening because if you look at it now, you'll see a lot of the guys not even not going to Virginia Tech, not going to UVA. They're not staying close to home They because they got options. We ain't had those type of options back then like that. The people that was doing what you're saying, calling and, and trying to be around, they was they was there for the wrong reason because those people I don't even speak to no more. Like as soon as the realization came that I won't go into the league, I ain't hear from those people. That's why I am the way I am with people now. Like I don't deal with too many people no more, bro. Just because I seen, I seen how people act. You know what I mean? I seen what people do. But as far as like my real friends and like people like you, like y'all did play and i understood that though because it was exactly what you just said as far as not making trying to make it seem like damn trying to ride bro wave or i'm just trying to be in the image or you know what i mean whatever the case may be but i think it would have helped me though just because of the type of person that i am i tried to stay away from them people that was constantly called i changed my number in college bro at least i swear and there's no lie i changed my number like every week probably like because it was i don't even know how people was getting my number bro it was like i hear from people that i haven't talked to since elementary school you know i seen you on, and i'm like damn like that's cool and i always wanted to be the type of person i ain't want nobody to be like oh bo thank you all this and all that and now he don't know who i am so i embraced everybody if anybody reached out to me i embraced them yeah i remember you what's up man I, that long time no see that type of thing whatever but they was there for the wrong reason. And my friends' friends, it was like they played the background, which I understood that though. But if it was if it was the other way around, I know that would have helped me because it would have kept me grounded. Not saying that I got like arrogant or big headed because that was never me either. I was always home. Like I would always, people would come up to me, oh my God, I can't believe it. Just, and I'm like, yo, I'm regular. Like I'm a regular person just like you. Like. People used to be going crazy, bro, and I never understood that. But looking back on it, I guess I understand it. It's like, damn, you doing something major. It wasn't major in my eyes, though. It was just, I'm playing football. Like, I've been playing football since I was six years old. Like, this is this is what I've been doing. Like, so it was not new to me. It was, I, I guess it was exciting for everybody. It was exciting for me, too. But like I said, it was just regular. Like, I felt like I, that's what I was supposed to be doing. So... I get what, exactly what you're saying, and I, I agree with you, but I don't I don't feel like a, a apology is necessary because you, you know what I mean? We, that's just how it is. That's just how that went, you know what I mean? Ain't nothing really changed with that, except for the people that I didn't want calling me, calling me and blowing me up and asking for tickets and asking for money. Like, I'm in college, bro. I ain't got no, I ain't got no money, bro. Like, I'm not, I didn't make nothing yet. So that's how that went, for sure. My genuine friends, I feel like, some of them may have thought that I was changing, like I, cause I wasn't reaching out like that or, or not, I mean, telling them to pull up, that type of thing, but it wasn't me changing. It was just really me trying to balance it all, bro. It was a lot, like it was just, and it went, like everything was happening so fast. It was just, I ain't really had time to reach out to people and be like, damn, I'm calling my dog, telling them to pull up, whatever, whatever. But it was all a circle though, cause if it was like, if I ain't talking to you directly, like you just said, I know you you cool with somebody that is talking to me. So it's like, we still keeping up with one another, just not directly per se, you know what I'm saying? But I did feel like at one point, like, damn, my real friends probably think I'm changing or I'm, you know I mean, getting ahead of myself, but it ain't even that. But I ain't even had time to try to address that at that time, for real, for real. Cause it was so much going on. It was just moving so fast. Like, honestly, that was like my, the one thing that I was always afraid of, like that my knee was gonna mess up, like because I had those issues in high school, in middle school, it started in middle school when I had the first surgery on, on my knee. And then I had surgery again, junior year in high school. So I, in the back of my mind, I was always like, just hoping my knee didn't mess up. But I, get, I guess I gotta give credit to Coach Gentry, which is why a uh, strength and conditioning coach at Virginia Tech because he had us on the main program like that pro if you stuck to the script with that program you was gonna see the results of that and I, so i'm gonna have to get credit for that to that 
that's the only really thing I can think about and God really because I had no problems with my knees at all like not one time was it sore nothing after no game it was always my shoulder which I still deal with to this day it's this shoulder like and I had three surgeries on this shoulder but it was never the knee the shoulder is something I think I tweaked at like my senior year of high school but it wasn't a big deal um it started becoming a big deal once I got to college and then my shoulder would just start popping out of place. But it got to the point where I'm a competitor. Like, it hurt, but I could still play. Like, it got to the point where I really knew how to pop my shoulder back in place and keep it pushing. Like, mm -hmm. it'll pop out, it'll dangle, pop it back in, all right, I'm good. Like, keep it moving. So, of course, naturally, that was messing it up even more. So, I ended up tearing my labrum in my shoulder. Um, what was that, 2005? That was 2005 season against UNC. That's the first time that it popped out and I couldn't pop it back in. I had to let the team doctor pop it back in. I went in, got the shot in my shoulder, came out, finished the game, and paid for it after that. But after I got that shot in my shoulder, the way I felt after the game, I was like, I'm never doing that again. Because yeah, the shot helped, I ain't, I ain't feel nothing after that shot. It was it was 100% in my mind. I thought it was 100% and they kept playing like no problem. But after that shot wore off, that was like the worst pain I ever experienced in my life. So I ended up having surgery after that season, the day after that bowl game, which was uh, the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville. I had surgery that next day and they, whatever they did to it, it felt like a new shoulder for a while. But a year later, it started hurting again, Like, but it would never pop back out. So I think whatever they did to it, as far as repairing that labor, they made it so it don't pop out. But that don't, that never stopped the pain from me, you know what I'm saying? So I was experiencing a lot of pain with the shoulder. Um, even to this day, still experience a lot of pain with the shoulder. So I always thought it was gonna be that knee though. Like that was always in the back of my mind. Like I think really going in freshman year, I was a little timid, like running. I won't even do like running and, and doing my full potential because I was always just scared, like something gonna happen to that knee. But I finally mentally got over that and had no problems with it at all. Like not one time, my knee was never sore or nothing, bro, it's crazy. So when I get the tech, it's exactly what I thought it was gonna be as far as my relationship with my teammates, the way the team looked, um, how things are going in practice. But as far as like the coaches, nah, it was like they switched up in a sense. And I understand that, you know, I understand the switch up because it's like, all right, we done recruiting you, you here now, let's get to work. So I get that. But it was in my mind as an 18 year old kid, I'm still looking for you to be the same person you were when you recruited me, you know what I mean? Like, I remember, <laughs> And I love Steiny, that's my guy, for real. He, he was the one that recruited me out of this area. He was the 757 um, recruiter or whatever. But I remember on several occasions seeing Coach Stein spring in like the, the football building and he walking right past me like, hey, I wasn't even there. And it's like, damn, like you was my best friend when you was recruiting me, but now I'm here, you don't even see me. But as far as like the team and teammates or whatever, it was exactly what I thought it was gonna be like. It was a brotherhood. Like we was all, it was, it was all cool. Like we all hung out. It was the seven five seven guys. That was what it was. Like that was that was a big thing for us. You know what I mean? Pushing each other and just competing and trying to make each other better. And um, so freshman year, I did end up red shirting, but um, I think that was more so on me, because like I told you before, when I looked at the roster as far as the running backs that was on the roster when I first got there. I knew uh, from a talent standpoint, I was better than everybody that was on the roster, like no question. The only real question I had, or I ain't even gonna say a doubt, but it was like concern, was the guy that came in with me. He was in my class, um, George Bell. I still talk to George to this day too. George was like a five-star recruit coming out of uh, Fayetteville, North Carolina. And he ended up signing the tech at the last minute, which is, this is why I didn't play basketball my senior year. Cause I seen he committed the tech and I'm like, yo, 
I just watched this man highlights, yo. I gotta, I mean, I gotta step my game up. So instead of playing basketball, I was going to Gold's Gym every day, like getting it, cause George was ripped. Like if you see George, you're like, yo, this is ripped. Like he cut up, he looked strong. I mean, looking at his highlights, he fast, he got moves, all of that. So I gotta get on my game. But as far as the people that was already there, I'm like, yo, I'm better than them. So go ahead and put my best foot forward. I should be playing my freshman year. Uh, red shirt never crossed my mind, bro. Like that was never part of my plan that I had. Like my plan was to always play as a true freshman. But I end up red shirt and it was more so of me not knowing the playbook all the way. Cause that was, that was a big jump for me too. Going from high school to learning these college plays, it's, it's a, a whole new ball game. I mean, I know some high schools potentially have like the complicated playbooks like you'll see in college, but we ain't had that at, in that room. Like it was just cut and dry. Like this to play, whatever, a couple words. I mean, college is like the quarterback coming to the huddle. He might call two, three plays at a time. Like and you got to pick it up real fast, but it, it all got simplified once you really learn it. But at that time I didn't learn it fast enough and I ended up red shirt. Now, from that red shirt, from me having the red shirt, now mind you, I already said, I think I'm better than everybody already. Not in an arrogant way, but talent-wise, I just know my talent is better than these guys, so I should be playing. And even my position coach told me the same thing. He said, the only thing he held you back was you. Like, you ain't picked the playbook up fast enough, you missing blitzes, X, Y, and Z, whatever. And he just like, yo, if you would've got that, you would have been on the field your true freshman year. Like I wanted to play you like bad. Like I was pulling for you. And um, just getting there with them guys, some red shirt. Now I turn into a rebel because it's like, why y'all bring me here? Like if y'all can red shirt, but this is just my immature mind thinking at that time. Like, why would y'all bring me here? And I got a red shirt. Like, that's just crazy. I ain't really understand the point of red shirt here. And um, I just started bucking. Like, honestly, I started, <laughs> not going to class, not going to meetings, skipping weightlifting, everything, because I feel like in my mind, I should be playing. Like I know I'm better than these guys. No reason I need to be red shirt. So I'm gonna do what I want to do. Like, so that's really how my entire freshman year went. Like just being rebellious. Like we had uh, 6 a.m. workouts on Wednesdays for guys that missed class and meetings or whatever the case may be i probably did them i did 6 a.m workouts every wednesday like i was just a, a regular like i'm going so who else gonna be in there with me or because he gonna be in there like and i was cool with that because it was just me like my way of sending a message to the coaches which was dumb and immature again but this was just my thinking like y'all gonna do that to me all right this is what i'm doing like I'm gonna do what I want to do. Whatever the consequences are, is the consequence. They end up having to change the, the workout because it became so normal to me. I go in there and kill it. Like they thinking this workout, you know, supposed to hurt you, pun is like a punishment thing. I just treated it like a regular workout. Let me go ahead and knock this workout out, go on about my day. And they start, they changed it up. They switched it to doing the bleaches and some more stuff just because of how I was doing it. So that's, that's a crazy story in itself. But that whole freshman year was just me, you know, practice. I would I would go to practice, you know what I mean? But most of the time I buck classes, I buck on classes and just was being a knucklehead, self-proclaimed self knucklehead as I always said. I didn't say that in the papers before and everything, but that's really what it was. Like I was just doing what I wanted to do. Yeah, yeah. that part was never explained to me as far as, like you said, being recruited versus when you actually committed and you enroll. It's a whole, it's, it's night and day. It's night and day, because once you're there, you're there. It's like, I don't gotta treat you good no more. I don't gotta like, you know what I mean? Be this extra nice person you no more, because you're here. Like me doing all of that was to get you to get here. Mm -hmm. Like I want your talent, your great talent. You got great ability. Like I want that here. But once you're here now, it's just like, now it's time to go to work. Like let's get to work so that talent can be utilized. They on to the next one. But it, like I said, I understand it and I get it. But at that time, when I was actually going through that, yeah, it, it was right. just different. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was just different. Cause it's just like, damn, you was calling me every day, like mm -hmm. texting me every second, like to walking by me, like you said. But I understand that as far as like, okay, they still got a job to do as far as recruiting 
the next person behind you, you know what I mean? Trying to get stuff together for the season and whatnot. But it was just different. It was just different and something that I did not understand at that time, yeah. which in turn made me do the things that I was doing, which was, I guess that was my way of uh, saying F you too. Like, you walk right by me or you don't talk to me or you not, I mean, checking in, tapping in with me, seeing what I got on, going on in my personal life. It's like you don't care about me, so I don't care about y'all. I'm gonna do what I wanna do. That's mm -hmm. what that was. Yeah. Until you start making plays. Yeah. Like, so 2006, when I, really, well, 2005 for real, like once I started playing for real and, mm -hmm. and really making plays, now it goes back to royal treatment after that. I still have um, Mike Emo, Cedric Hills. They're seniors now at this point, and they're still in front of me. So. Technically, I'm the third screen running back, right? Um, I get playing time, but usually, like the first few games of that season is more of me coming in the game late in the game when we are already up. And you know what I mean? We got the game in the bag and they just throw me in the fire or whatever, see what's going on. Probably midway through the season, one of them two was always hurt. Like more so Mike Emo than Said, said did break his arm that year um, in the Marshall game, and Emo happened to be out that game. So that was really like the first game where I was like the, the feature back. Um, but prior to that, it was just, yeah, throwing me in there, fourth quarter, a few minutes left, just let him run the ball, whatever. But over the course of that year, over that, over that season, I think I ended the season like second on the team in Russian. Say it had more yards to me, but it was like 40 more yards or something, you know what I mean? With a whole lot more carries. We probably had the same amount of touchdowns. Like, so the production, production wise, it was equal, except for the amount of carries that, that he had versus what I had, you know what I'm saying? Like I had a significantly less amount of carries than he had. This is how I knew, like, this is what I already knew before it happened, like I knew what I was capable of doing. It was just, that was really my opportunity to showcase that. And that's when it all really started coming to the light. And for myself, really for myself is when I, I really was like, okay, yeah. So of course in high school, you think, okay, I can get, I can do this, this ain't nothing. That was really my awakening to let me know like, yeah, I'm built for this. Like I, I, can, I got what it take to be successful on this level. Like it's, it's levels to it, it's different levels. Like that's when it really clicked for me. Like, yeah, you can, you can do it. Like you can do some things here. Yeah. Now I was really taking it serious. I'm on the screen now, now because I'm playing. That's all I wanted to do was play. Like I only did all the bucking because I won't play. Like mm -hmm. it won't. So if you, when you red shirt, you only practicing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you know what I mean? Then Friday, Saturday, you really off. Cause the, the travel team, the guys that's gonna play in the game, they do a walk through Friday and they travel on Fridays, the game on Saturday. So if you red shirt, you ain't gotta do all that. Like you only gotta go to the game. You can't go to the games. Like you, you oh, can go to the home games, but the away games, you're not traveling with the team. So you do what you wanna do. So I really was, Bucking, like I was just bucking, like, all right, I'm going home this weekend. Like, I'm just doing whatever I wanted to do, bro. Like, it was just whatever. But once I start playing, now you let me do what I love to do. So yeah. now I'm going to do right. Like, I'm gonna, it's easy for now. I'm going to make sure I do right because I want to play. Mm -hmm. If I don't do right, I know you're not going to let me play. So I'm going to do right. That won't even the question. Like, at that point, I'm going to class, lifting weights like I'm supposed to. Going to all meets, I'm doing everything by the book. I'm doing everything right at that point because I want to play. That's all I wanted to do was just play. So now on the on the roster is me, George Bell, uh, guy named Kenny Lewis, and a couple freshmen guys. Uh, Might have been Cheeseman and a couple uh, Devin Raff. It was just a couple guys, but. Again, not not being arrogant, I still just knew like it. I'm I'm the best bet we got, and they knew that too. Just based off of what I did the prior year, to just seeing me in practice, I stayed uh, that summer. 
stayed uh, at Tech the whole summer, work, did the whole summer workout. So mentally and physically, I was ready from the jump. Like just, I knew this was my time. I was about to be a starter now. Like there's no excuses, whatever. I'm gonna get the ball like I wanna get the ball. I gotta make sure I'm on my game. So I, I took that season very, very serious. Um, stayed there the whole summer, worked out. Uh, did summer school, took classes in summer school and just mentally prepared myself to be the starter and to carry the load. Like, I think I think that season, 2006, I probably accounted for 75% of the offensive production, like the entire offense, not mm -hmm. just the running, like just the entire offense. That was a big season and that, that was really a season that was like put on my back. If anybody knows like Virginia Tech football, prior to 2006, Virginia Tech always ran like a two back system. Like they rotate uh, back and forth. They just rotate back and forth, two backs the whole game. It's always been like that since I knew about Tech, like going back to Kevin Jones and uh, what's my guy's name? I can't even, his, mind, his name slipping me right now. Kevin Jones. Then it was emo and and said, and then I came, but it was just like, it is my show. Like at that point, because I'm never gonna take myself out the game. I'm not taking myself out. And I think I just used to be doing my thing to the part coach was just like, yeah. And I one thing I did express to Coach Height was like, yo, as the game go on, the more I touch the ball, I feel like I get better. Like a lot of people get tired whatever but it's like once third quarter hit i feel like the game just started really for me defense tired now like this is where this is where i get my money at right here like so it was just one of them things he allowed me to do it he's like take it when you need a breather you take yourself out which was never happening i'm never taking myself out of the game so i was in there bro like i was just the feature back like i just got the ball and it was just just, just me, it was B.O. I'm locked in. That's probably the most focused I've ever been in my life. Like I was just completely locked in and engaged and practicing hard. Like I was doing everything by the book at mm -hmm. that point. But it's funny because as I'm producing, as that season is going on, now I'm getting treated like you can do whatever you want to do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You don't got to go to class today. Like the people that, we had people that was assigned to like check our classes and make sure we're in class make sure we're in study hall make sure we show up to this make sure we show up to that those same people would tell me how you feeling today b you good and i'm like yeah i'm good but you don't gotta you don't gotta go to class you don't want to you don't gotta do this you don't want to so that's what was going on now on the flip side of that 2007 i know we gonna get to that it went back. It flipped again because now my production went down. Now I get I'm banged up the whole season. Now my numbers ain't the same. I ain't producing the same. Now it goes back to, yo, you need to make sure you're in that class. You need to make sure you're doing this. So this is another thing that that bothered me because it's, it's, it's something I ain't understand at the time either. I mean, I knew why that was happening, but I ain't understand like what, like why y'all doing it? like what's going on? Y'all making me out to be a bad guy when it was just last year. I can do no wrong. You was letting me do whatever I wanted to do. And I won't, really, I won't even take advantage of the situation that year. So everything went well, 2006 season. Um, I had a productive year, great year. Actually, I mean, it was a good year. That was the only thing that I, that was like the only regret that I had, like when I left Tech, is that I should have left that year. So in football, you have to be three years removed from high school. My red shirt sophomore year made me three years removed from high school. So at the end of each um, season in college, you can like enter your, not enter your name in the draft per se, but you can see where you stand. Like if you were to enter the draft, where are they projecting you to be drafted? So the end of that sophomore, red shirt sophomore year, I think I got hurt. I got hurt the game before the last game, which was Wake Forest game, and then we had UVA after that. So I got hurt, missed, pretty much missed Wake Forest game and missed UVA game. So in my mind, 
at the end of that season, I did put my name in, see what my draft grade was, and it was like a high second round pick. So I'm looking at it like, damn, I know I ain't reached my full potential. Like I know I haven't scratched the surface of my ceiling yet. Like I'm gonna stay one more year. I'm going first round. Like this was just my mental. Like that's this was what was about to happen. Like it's no question. Like because I just know. Like it's all it had, at that point. It all had came together for me. Like just understanding college football and just all of that. Like just everything had clicked. So. I'm about to kill it in my mind. I'm about to break all the records around here. I'm about to do all of that this next season because I know I ain't scratched the surface yet. It turned out to be a bad mistake, a bad decision on my behalf because why not just go ahead and enter the draft? You know what I mean? Like my whole thing with, with all of that, like entering the draft, I just always wanted to take care of mom dude. So I could have did that with that, but it's just like me not being satisfied, like knowing or feeling like I can do better, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So it's like, all right, I'm gonna come back for my red shirt, junior year, kill it, and I'm going first round. Like, it's no question. It was really just me, like, making that decision. Like, I had people that, you know, that I would consult with and, and speak to about certain stuff, but that's another thing. Like, I never really had nobody to, to guide me. It was always, yeah, this you can do this or you weighing my options or presenting my options to me, but there's nobody it was nobody there that was like, This is the move that needed to be made. What do you think about this? It was just, yeah, here are your options right here. What do you wanna do? Like we're gonna support whatever you wanna do. Which is cool, but at the same time it's like I'm still a kid, bro. Like I'm young. I know I'm at that age where it's like you 20, 21 years yeah, old, so you grown, that. but you ain't you really grown. You don't know nothing for real. So I'm just like, I'm looking at, I'm looking at it a whole different way. Like, yeah, I'm gonna stay for another year, and I'm gonna go first round versus somebody just presenting it to me in a different fashion, like just saying, yo, yeah, you could potentially go first round, or you can potentially something bad can happen, and you could potentially not get drafted, or you can go late rounds or whatever the case may be. They, that option was never like presented to me in a, in a manner that made me think about it. It was just, I made that decision and I just ran with it. Spring after, after that red shirt sophomore year, that's when that, uh, that shooting happened at Virginia Tech. So we was in the middle of spring ball. Shooting. Yeah, when that mass shooting happened at Tech, we were in the middle of spring football, like about to have our spring game and everything. But when that shooting happened, we all got sent home, like go home. No, we ain't doing no more spring practice. Ain't no more. Um, we're not doing the spring game, of course. So I end up staying home in Virginia, like in Chesapeake through the summer instead of going back. Instead of going back to school and, and doing like summer school and summer workouts, I stayed in Virginia, worked out in Virginia in Chesapeake and just didn't go back now. That was a mistake also, really. Like, cause you just looking at it, like, why not go back to school and, and not me? But it was a lot of stuff going on in Chesapeake with uh, a particular individual that was a close friend of mine at that time um, that, I, that I wanted to make sure he was straight. Like, so I made that decision to like, you know what? I'm a, I mean, I'm working out like I'm posted. It wasn't like I was just sitting around doing that. I definitely was working out. I was in shape, all of that. But it was just not being there to get in that shape. Like, it's a difference, you know what I mean? You can work out on your own. You can be in some type of shape. But you ain't up there, you know what I mean, with the squad doing, getting in shape and shape, you know what I'm saying? But I made that decision just because that was my man's at the time. Like, so I wanted to make sure he was straight. He had a lot of stuff going on. And... I just wanted to help him out, which I ended up doing. Like I got him straight and then I ended up going to school for the second second uh, summer session or whatever. And um, it all it all worked out. But like I said, when I got up there, I won't in football shape. You know what I mean? I was in shape, you know what I mean? I won't fat, nothing like that. I was, you know what I mean? Built, all of that, you know what I mean? Had my win right, all of that. It was just, it's a different kind of shape. So. Basically, I'm playing catch up at that point because now I'm behind the eight ball. You know what I'm saying? I done delayed myself and um, I'm just trying to catch up at that point. That affected everybody, bro, because it was just like 
we all felt like that could have been any of us. You know what I mean? Like that could have literally been any of us because it was just how that whole situation happened. It's like we all on campus, we all in class at the time. Like it could have been that hall, whatever hall you was in, it could have been that hall that, that the guy decided he wanted to shoot up. Like, so we it all affected us in that sense. And I think it brought the whole campus together though. Like it was like a crazy unity after that, bro. It was like not just with the football team, with like all the students, all the staff, like it was just crazy. It was just it was beautiful though. It was like, you know what I mean? The, the shooting was of course a tragedy, but from that became something beautiful came from that because it was just like, everybody's together now. Like everybody's looking at life and just everything totally different. So it kind of brought everybody close together. So it all was like, it all worked out in, in good favor because it brought everybody together. Like people you would never talk to, Everybody's talking to everybody now. Like, hey, how you doing? Checking on people, how's your day? All of that type of stuff. Like, it was a, a beautiful thing that happened after that. When I get there, so this is to to gauge if you're in shape. Like at Tech, we had these things called one tens, right? Which is you running the entire length of the football field from the back of one end zone to the next goal line, 110 yards. And we had to do it in it went off your position. So whatever position you played had a certain amount of time to run these 110s. I think we had to run 16 of them or something like that. Like 16 110s, that was our physical test. If you fail this, you ain't in shape. If you pass it, you in shape, right? So I get there, we gotta do that. We gotta do the 110s. I don't pass the 110s. Like I think I did like 14 of them on time. The other two, not on time, so you fail. All right, big story come out of the paper. Brandon Orr showed up the uh, camp out of shape, blah, 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 whatever. So Coach Height, I don't know if he was like just trying to like teach me a lesson or if it was something that he just had to do because he like make an example or whatever, but he put me at the bottom of the depth chart. Like, so when, when training started for that season, I'm at the bottom of the depth chart. Now, mind you, I see it and I'm looking at it like, okay, like I get it. I, I don't take it serious because it's just like, it's a joke. Like, who you, like, who you gonna start? Like, that's how I'm looking at it. So I just go about my business. Like, I just go about my business and practice, running extra after practice just to make myself get in shape faster, right? By the time the season started, I'm back at the top of the death chart, which I already knew. Like, I knew that was gonna happen, but I knew Coach Height. He had his own reasons behind that, know what I mean? And I didn't even know until K. Luke, my dog, uh, Kenny Lewis brought it to my attention. Like, yo, you know you at the bottom of the death chart, da 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 And he was always positive about it with me too, cause he was like, you know, that's just, he trying to see what you gonna do, like how you gonna act. So I guess I responded in the right way to him and, and you know, got in, in good enough shape that when he felt comfortable putting me back at the top of the death chart. So season start, I'm back at RB1. Um, I think out the gate, first game, I get like bruised ribs or something. So just basically over the course of like the first three games, three or four games, I just keep getting smaller nagging injuries. Roll my ankle here, uh, jam my fingers up here, bruised ribs. So it was just a whole lot of small lingering issues the ribs is what one of the issue that I could, it lingered on for like two months. Like, and that's, it was a serious issue for me, but I'm a competitor again. Like I go get treatment for it. They ask me, Hey, how you doing? You think you, I'm good. Like, I mean, just get my treatment, whatever. And I'm gonna keep pushing. But deep down inside, I'm not myself. I know I'm not myself. You can look at the film and see that I'm not myself, but I just couldn't come to grips with just saying, yo, I'm hurt, like I can't play. Like I, cause I never experienced that before. I never experienced having to set myself down or not me, or take myself out the game or whatever the case may be. I just couldn't do it. I couldn't find it in me. Now if coach would have pulled me and say, yo, you don't look like yourself. Like I know something up and took me out. I wouldn't have argued it because I knew that was, that's what really what was going on. But if it was up to me, like it was, 
not taking myself out. Like, I'm going to just, I figure it out. Like, it'll get better at some point, but it showed. Like, I should have sat down. Like, I should have just chalked it up, sat out a game or two, and got right. Because that season, it was bad. Like, to my standards, anyway, it was bad. Like, the first half of that season was bad because I was hurt. Um, so, I only end up getting better because we had a bye week. So that was like a week for me to like, I have no contact, not practice, just straight rehab. And that's when we came back off that bye week, that's when I started to feel like myself again. And that showed on film as well. That's when I started playing better, you know what I'm saying? But the end of the season, I think I finished with, I think I was probably like six yards short of a thousand yards. Like, but just looking at that season, you wouldn't even think like I had that many yards, but that's what I ended up with. But it was still a bad season to me because it just didn't look, it ain't look good. That season ends and then that's when I end up leaving Tech. So the go back of how all of the leaving Tech came about, um, 2000, summer of 2005 so before i even played it down i was uh riding in the car with a guy and he wasn't a student or nothing that tech he just was always up there and i mean i think he had a girl that went there or something but he was cool he was a cool dude and i mean i ain't know him but i know and i mean i knew he was from the 75 he was a cool dude whatever he had got some rims for his car and he had got him for a crazy number. I forgot what, what he said back, but back then it was like a cheap number. Like, so I'm like, yo, take me, you know what I mean? Take me to that spot. You know what I mean? This is, he still got the rims in his car. Like he literally come back and, and showing off the rims. Like, yeah, I just got these for X, Y, and Z. I'm like, yo, take me up there right now. Like why you still, I want to get them right now. Same jump. So in the midst of us going to look at these rims, we get pulled over. Dude had drugs in the car. Police search the car, find that at first he ain't saying that. He ain't saying it's his. He just said, I don't know who it is. So anybody know anything, both of y'all going to jail at that point. Like, so they end up taking both of us downtown. When we get in there, when we get in the police station or whatever, I just go, I get a dude to look like, yo, you better got down. You know what I mean? Be a man, nigga. Like, you got to hold your own shit. He end up, doing what they're supposed to do, letting the folks know it was his shit, whatever. And it got swept under the rug for me. Like I never forget one of the police officers was that that arrested us or whatever, or detained us, however you want to put it, figured out who I was. And he was like, yo, don't ever speak on this. Like, don't say nothing to nobody about it. Don't say nothing to the coaches, whatever. Cause you're not getting charged. Like there's no need to bring nothing up. So fast forward. Two years later, 2007, dude get locked up because I guess he had prior charges or whatever for whatever he had going on. So he locked up for them whole two years behind getting pulled over that day. He sit in there, he come up with a whole nother story that, that the drugs was mine and he was just taking the blame because I'm Brandon or he didn't want to get me in trouble, right? So what ended up happening is like, it's a federal case too, mind you. So that make it even crazy. You know what I mean? It just look crazy. Uh, FBI agent, I never forget, came to the football building looking for me one day. Coaches looking confused, like what the like what what you got going on? I'm like, yo, something happened two years ago. I was told to never speak on it. That's why I never said nothing about it. Whatever. So now he didn't involve me saying it's mine. So now I pretty much got a go to bat for myself saying, yo, that's not mine. I had no idea that shit was in there, blah, 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 whatever. Um, do end up getting out on that because come to find out the police pulled, pulled him over wrongfully, like it was supposed to be, or searched the car illegally, whatever. But that just looked so bad for me, being who I was at the time, being who I am, and the institution. Like that's, they really not, going for nothing like that because it's all over the papers it's in the paper every week every day whatever Brandon or involved in a federal drug case it just looked crazy you know what i mean so that was kind of like the final straw for me at virginia tech because it was like 
how do you come back from that in their eyes this is how they're looking at it i suppose like how do you come back from that like what do we suspend you like what do you like kick you off the team for a little bit what do we do so i remember having that meeting with the coaches it was like literally all the coaches on the staff we in uh coach beamer office and they called me in there and was like yo we think about letting you go now me being who i am at that time or who i still am really i ain't get it you know what i mean i ain't get why y'all doing this? Because for one, I never got charged. You know what I mean? I was told by a police officer to not even mention it. So that's why I never said that to y'all in the first place. And I was scared when it first happened for real, for real, because it's like, damn, I'm gonna get kicked out of the team. If they find out about this, I'm definitely getting kicked out of the team. So when he, once the police officer was like, yo, don't, I'm like, yes, I'm not, I ain't gonna say nothing. Like, trust me, I'm not gonna say nothing about it, whatever. Cause I'm not getting charged. Like nobody, there's no way for nobody to find out about it. I ain't getting charged. So they like, yo, we gonna, uh, we think about letting you go, da 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 da. And I'm just like, all right, that's what's up. I mean, that's cool. That's how y'all feel. That, that's what it is. But my position coach ended up telling me after the fact, like, Coach Beamer and them said that to you because they wanted you to like, I guess like fight for to be on the team or whatever but i'm like y'all like i don't know i got so much pride and and like i'm just i ain't do nothing wrong i just felt like i didn't do nothing wrong so it's like i'm not about to beg y'all like y'all already had me on some bs over the last couple of years like this last past season for real y'all had me on some bs because my production went down so now y'all went back to the old ways but the year before that y'all was treating me a certain type of way where i couldn't do no wrong i could do anything i wanted to do no problem but now it's a different story. So I'm already feeling some type of way. So when they pulled me in that meeting, I, mentally I was just drained. I was just like, all right, cool. So they got a look on their face like that. Like he, ain't, like he ain't gonna say nothing else. Like he just gonna go with it. Like, and I walked out. Like I'm not about to beg y'all. I'm not about to do none of that. But I guess I, I kind of thought about it uh, towards like, like once it all was said and done, like damn, I should have carried that a different way. But my pride was my pride was too strong, bro, because it was just like I felt like I ain't do nothing. And they never asked me what happened. Like they that and that was another thing. That was really the main thing. It's like nobody never sat down with me as far as the coaches to say, talk to me, like what happened? Like what's going on? What is what is all of this about? It's like they read the paper. Oh, this is what's going on. And then that that's what they went with. And it was just like, all right, we're gonna let you go. So what they really wanted to do was for me to like beg for my spot on the team or whatever. And they was going to suspend me for like, I think they said like either three or five games, which I still felt like that was, that won't right. Like, what am I being suspended for? I know how it looked, but let's go with the facts. Like how, did, how I look and the facts is two totally different things, but y'all never asking me the facts. Y'all ain't asking me nothing. Y'all really just saying, this is what we see, this is what we've been told, this is what we're going with, and this is the result of that. Unless you pretty much like beg to be on the team or, or plead your case to be on the team. But not once did you as a head coach or you as a position coach say, you know what, let me sit down and talk to this young man one-on-one -on -one and see exactly what went on in this situation and then let me make a decision based off of that. Because everything I would have told you would have been a fact and you could have researched that. You could have did your due diligence and found out the same thing that I'm telling you. And then you could have made a decision after that. Now, if you would have did that and still felt like you had to suspend me for like three games or something, I might would have been like, you know what? I don't think that's right, but yeah, to stay on the team, yeah, I'm gonna do that. That's cool, whatever. Because I was told that after the fact. Coach Hype told me that after the fact, like after it was all said and done and I was already leaving Tech. Yeah, they just wanted you to, to show that you cared or fight, you know what I mean? I'm like, nah, at that time, I didn't see, I didn't see the need for me to do that because I felt like I didn't do anything wrong at that time. So I ended up leaving, that's what happened. I ended up leaving Tech the end of 2007. After that 2007 season, I left. It was hard, bro, because honestly, mentally, I had kind of like gave up. Mentally, I was just like, you know what? It ain't work here at Tech, I'm done. Like, I ain't even, 
I'm now I just want to graduate. I just want to graduate and I'm going to just start my life as a, as a regular person. Like that's why I was at for like two months. And then my cousin called, he was at a division two school. So they, back then they didn't have it where you can transfer. Yeah, but they ain't had all of that. So my only option with well, one year eligibility left was to go down level. Like I could have went to division two, II, division three, no problem. Division Another division one school, I couldn't do because I would have had to sit out a year and then play that following year. I only had one year eligibility left. So I ended up going to a division two, uh, division two school in West Virginia. My cousin uh, Mooney, that's the school he was at. He was on, um, he had been there for like, like three years or something. I think he did his whole college career was there. And I just remember him calling me like, yo, Cub, like what's your next move? What you gonna do? And I'm telling him like, I'm done, bro. Like it ain't, it's over with. Like I ain't mentally, I ain't there. Like it's just, I'm drained, bro. Like I'm just done. Like nah, cuz you can't give up. I mean, you got too much talent. Come down here with me. And I'm like, all right, I'm gonna come check it out. I mean, he convinced me. I was like, all right, I'm gonna come check it out. I went up there. I think I went up there during the summer. They was doing, um, they was doing like their summer workouts or whatever. So I got a chance to see the school, see, you know what I mean, see the team or whatever, meet the coach. Coach up there was cool. Uh, coach Wiley, I still talk to Wiley to this day. He was like one of the, the realest coaches I ever had, like straight up and down. Um, so once I got up there and seen that, it was like, the mojo was coming back to him I'm like, all right, you right, bro. I can't, I can't just give it up like that. I'm gonna get another shot. I'm gonna see whatever happens, happens. Like really at that point, graduating college was like my main focus, but I was just like, all right, I'm gonna play. Just, you know what I mean? Just to see what happens with it or whatever. And um, that season went pretty good up there. Like I, I was mentally back, but that 100% back because I was still in shock uh, of how drastically different it was. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was like going from uh, Virginia Tech where there's 80,000 fans. We get, you know what I mean? As far as the football players, we literally got everything that we need. Like, we don't got to buy nothing. You got cleats, you got everything. Like, you getting fed, all of this, that, and the third is like luxury. And then you go to Division Two. it's like, nigga, you got to go buy your own cleats. Know what I mean, you gotta go. You gotta go get your own cleats, bro. You gotta. Know what I mean, you gotta get your own meals. You gotta figure all of that out. Now, imagine Division Two. We did have a little car to eat in the cafeteria, but it didn't compare. We had gourmet meals at, at Tech versus a pizza at this spot. So it was just different, bro. Like I was still trying to wrap my mind around, like, damn, I just went from this to this. Like, truth be told, when I first got to West Lib. I think I stayed there for like two weeks and I was just like, I can't do it. I can't, I can't do it, bro. Yeah, like I just can't do it. I left. I literally left, packed all my stuff up. I left, bro, came back to Chesapeake and was just like, I don't know what my next move is, bro, but I can't do that. That's, that's crazy. Like that, it's just crazy. My cousin calling me, blowing me up. Coach Wiley calling me, calling me. I ain't answering the phone for nobody. I'm just like, I'm done with it. Like and my mom's like, what? So what? Like, what you gonna do? Like, you can't, you can't give up. Like, you can't. Just, you gotta. You gonna find another school or like, what you gonna do? So I end up answering the phone for a while. Like, this is why I say he like one of the realest like people in general that I ever met in my life. He convinced me to come back, bro. I don't remember exactly what he said, but I just know the way he broke things down to me. It made sense in a way that nobody has ever broke anything down to me, you know what I mean? And I went back and I ended up staying, you know what I mean? I think half of the problem was when I first got there, we was in dorm room, we was in the dorm room. And it was just like, it was just weird, bro. I just like, can't do this, like I gotta get out of here. So when I got back, he made sure that we had an apartment, like everything was just, you know what I mean? It was some sense of normalcy once I got back there. So I was like, all right, cool. Like I can, I can work with this. So I ended up spending that last, my last season of eligibility at, at West Liberty. The season at West Lib went, you know, went good. I think I had, as far as stats, I think I probably had like 1,300 yards or something like that, like 24 touchdowns. 
which like I said, I was locked in, but I won't really lock in, bro. So, Cause like, if I was really locked in, like I was at Tech, I could have easily, and I know this is like looking back, like, oh, you could have did this. But I know for a fact, like the competition was nowhere near like Virginia Tech. I could have easily, like if I would have locked all the way in, bro, I could have had 2,500 yards and 40 touchdowns, but I just won't, I still won't there mentally all the way. I was just kind of like going through the motions, honestly, like, let me just do this to say I did it and not, you know what I mean? Just to say I ain't give up or I ain't quit, whatever. But it was it was a decent season. Like that's, that ain't no, no nothing to yeah. look down upon. Mm -hmm. Like it was a decent season. But again, to my standards, I know what I was capable of doing. But after that season, uh, during that season, scouts is coming. Why lie telling me the whole time? Like, bro, we ain't never had scouts at this school. Like, scouts never come look at players. We had scouts from, like, every NFL team coming to watch us practice, coming to the games. Me and my cousin, like, and they was watching both of us. And that's another reason I went to that school because my cousin, he played defensive back. He got, he, I think he still got the record to this day, like, most interceptions for Division II. And they had, like, 40-some interceptions up for his career. Like, something crazy. So they not only was watching me, they was watching him too. You know what I'm saying? So they coming, they there, they at practice, they at uh, games, all of that. And I mean, end of the season come, I uh, I do a pro day at uh, at Hampton, Hampton University, Cadillac, my high school coach, Cadillac Harris put that together because that that was really my only. I couldn't go back to Virginia Tech for their pro day. West Lib ain't have a pro day because. Division two, like, ain't no, they not used to no pros coming from there. So mm -hmm. they didn't have no pro day for them. So I had to find a pro day I can go to. I got selected for um, an all-star game. I can't even think of the name of the, the uh, game because I didn't even end up playing it. I went out there and then I had some complications with my shoulder. So I ended up leaving. But in the midst of me leaving, I get the call that I, get, I got invited to the combine, like the NFL combine. So I'm like, that's what ended up making me say to myself, all right, I'm leaving. Like, I ain't even going to risk messing my shoulder up more. I'm going to just go rehab my shoulder and get ready to go to this combat. You know what I'm saying? Um, I was training in Atlanta. I was training in Atlanta um, that whole that whole offseason, for real, getting ready for just whatever, to combine and all of that type of stuff. And then... Um, that's when I got that call that I got invited to the combine. It was kind of like last minute, but I was already ready. Really, I'm, I was ready for it because I had been training that whole time. And um, get to the combine, go through everything, didn't run the time that I wanted to run because so what ended up happening in the midst of me training, and this it's another instance of me like not having nobody to really guide me it was like yeah. people telling me stuff but they won't mm -hmm. telling me like yeah. bro this is what you need to do like yeah. it was just like people just going with the flow so in my mind i'm thinking like i think i'm like 202 pounds at the time when i first started training i need to put some weight on like going to the lead you gotta put a, i need to be at least 215 mm -hmm. like you know what i mean which i did put on good weight too it was solid i was you know what i mean bulked up it won't no fat you know what i mean none of that it was good weight but my body won't used to that weight, you know what I mean? So I get to the combat, I run something crazy. Like, no it ain't me. I'm like, damn, that's 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 bad. Like that ain't that ain't what it is. And then the icing on the cake, like I said, in the midst of training, I hurt my shoulder weightlifting. So I end up going to Alabama. I never forget uh anybody in the sports world I know, like at that time, like the number one sports doctor in the in the country was James Andrews. Coach uh Dr. Andrews out of Alabama. He was like the best sports doctor. I hurt my shoulder training. I got the bright idea to go to him. Like go to him, he the best doctor. He gonna tell me exactly what's going on with the shoulder. I go to him, he look at the x-rays of my shoulder and literally say, You got the shoulder of a 65 year old man right now. Like and I'm 23 something like that so that's when i really knew my shoulder was like fucked up like mm -hmm. but i ain't like i knew because i d had to deal with it but i ain't really know it was like to that extent but by him saying that 
you got to think. And by him being the top doctor, top sports doctor, all the teams are consulting with him. Mm -hmm. So that was like a, that was like the, the negative, like the negative thing I couldn't come back from once he, basically if they asking him, if a team asking him, hey, what's up with it was really a note, like, nah, that shoulder is, is through. Like, that shoulder's done. He told me out the gate, he told me to my face, like, but I didn't, I'm not putting it all together, like, damn, he about to spread the word type thing, like, but that's exactly what happened. So, that hampered me too, with, as far as being drafted. I got some calls to, like, the Giants and the Rams, but this how tricky that is. So, the agent I had, the, the end of the draft come, I don't, I don't get drafted, draft over, probably like an hour after the draft ended, I get a call from my agent, like, yo, when you get drafted, I told you this was a possibility, blah, 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 um, but we got a trial. We got a trial for the Giants, we leave on Tuesday, whatever, right? Cool. I'm going up there, do my thing, I know, I mean, I know I got talent, so I know, I mean, it's a possibility that I can make the team or at least make camp, whatever. An hour after we hang up, he called me back. Scratch that. They changed their mind. Never mind. Like, he did that like two or three times. Like, different teams two or three times. But that's just how that stuff go, bro. Like, that. So, at that point, I'm just like, man, fuck it. Like, it is what it is. Like, but I was already, like, mentally prepared for that. But just for it to actually happen, it, it took me to a dark spot for a little minute, bro. Like, I was in a dark place for a while behind that, but like I said, I was a little bit prepared for it, but cause it was like, what's next? I ain't know what was next. You know what I mean, cause I've been balling all my life. So it's like, what, like what the, what the hell am I supposed to do now? Like I had to figure that out. It took me a long time to figure that out. in the kitchen. kitchen. I don't even do the dishes. Nah. Slow money like no money. You owe money to wish it. Broke niggas better pitch in. Front doors getting kicked in. Funny money getting mixed in. Bars and beats, I switch it.